It was already passed by the House of Representatives and there was also a version of the Senate regarding the new bill. However, there is a possibility that the new immigration law could be implemented soon. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Jocelyn and for today's topic, I'm going to provide you the latest update regarding the new Philippine immigration law. I already made several videos regarding the proposed changes for non-immigrant visas. Just to give you a backdrop, the Bureau of Immigration in the Philippines is under the Department of Justice. Now the Bureau of Immigration is aiming for modernization through new technologies and services. Norman G. Tancinko is the new Bureau of Immigration Commissioner. He said that we are looking into ways of modernizing the Bureau through e-services and manless transactions. Not only will this up the level of the agency, but will also serve as a major deterrent for illicit activities. He also said that we will be pushing for the new immigration law that will update the 82-year-old Philippine Immigration Act to ensure that we adapt to modern times. For those who are asking regarding the differences under the current Philippine Immigration Law, 30 days visa-free for countries under Executive Order Number 408 or 59 days for visa-required countries, so we're only talking about the non-immigrant temporary visitor visa. Under the proposed changes, it will be 59 days or not exceeding two months. Let's move on to the category. Under the current Philippine immigration law, there is only one category of temporary visitor. However, under the proposed changes, there are more categories. For business, it will be called A1 visa, for pleasure, A2 and for health, A3. I'm going to discuss all the different types of non-immigrant visas later in this video. Let's move on to the other differences. First, there's only a few categories for temporary visas under the current Philippine immigration law, such as visitor or student visas. Under the proposed changes, there are now a more expanded category of non-immigrant visas. They will be according to alphabetical or A2M visas. Let's move on to another difference. Emigration clearance for temporary visitors will be required for those who have stayed more than six months under the current Philippine law. And then under the proposed law, immigration clearance will be required for all temporary visitors regardless of length of stay. Also, non-immigrant status may be extended up to two to six months under the current Philippine law, but under the proposed changes, you can adjust to permanent residence status if you are qualified and, and also apply for quota or non-quota immigrant visas. There are a lot of questions regarding Balikbayan visa. Will the Balikbayan visa be affected? The answer is no, there are no provisions repealing or updating the Balikbayan visa, but it could affect the foreign spouse or foreign children traveling to Philippines alone and all foreign tourists going forward. Also, will the retiree's visa or the SRRV be affected? The answer is no. There are no provisions stated in the proposed bill affecting the retiree's visa. Also, the retiree's visa is regulated under the Philippine Retirement Authority and not by the Bureau of Immigration. There is a new possibility that the new Philippine Immigration Law or Immigration Modernization Act could be implemented soon. You know how it is in the Philippine government. They only give like a short notice regarding the implementation of laws or changes to travel requirements. I'm going to focus on the non-immigrant visa proposed changes. First, let's discuss the visa validity. This will be the authorized stay of temporary visitors. So it will be not exceeding 59 calendar days from date of arrival subject to bilateral or multilateral agreements. Regarding the visa validity of visas issued abroad, a single entry non-immigrant visa or immigrant visa shall be valid for a period not exceeding three months and it can be extended. For the documents required, of course, you will need a valid passport from your government and other travel documents and if required, a valid visa granted by the consular officer. 
Here are the conditions of your stay. The foreign national shall not take any employment whether paid or unpaid. Also, the foreign national shall not establish or join in any business and shall not enroll or become a student at a school, college, university, or other educational institution unless granted proper application or conversion of another immigrant status. This is a new proposed change. Non-immigrants will be required an immigration clearance upon exit. A temporary visitor departing from the Philippines shall, after the expiration of the initial authorized stay, shall be required to apply for immigration clearance and pay the prescribed fees and charges. Also, a registered foreign national who departs permanently from the Philippines shall surrender all Philippine immigration documents and apply for an immigration clearance. And here are the conditions. No pending obligation with the government or any of its agencies or instrumentalities. No pending criminal, civil, or administrative proceeding which requires continued presence in the country. And there is no ongoing legislative inquiry were called upon to testify as a witness. So temporary visitors and other registered foreign nationals must secure an immigration clearance before departing. There are several types of visas proposed to be implemented. Let's start with the A visa. Philippines is adopting the alphabetical type of classification for visas. A visas, temporary visitors, visitors coming to the Philippines for a temporary period for reasons of business, pleasure, or health. Let's start with the business visa, A1. Let me provide the nature of this visa. Temporary visitors engaged in activities of a commercial or professional nature for a foreign employer or for themselves that will not result in gainful employment in the Philippines. The term business refers to conventions, conferences, consultations, and other legitimate activities of a commercial or a professional nature but does not include local employment. Let's move on to the next type. It's still in the A visa. It's A2 pleasure visa. Temporary visitors who stay in the Philippines for holiday including sightseeing, recreation, or visiting relatives. Most likely this will be the temporary visitors visa for foreign tourists. Okay, A3, health. So this is for temporary visitors who stay in the Philippines to avail of medical treatment. Let's move on to the next type of visa, B visas. So what are B visas? So these are for transit persons, persons passing through the Philippines solely for a stopover who have a confirmed connecting flight to another country or passengers in immediate and continuous transit to a destination outside the Philippines. Another type are C visas. What are C visas? Crew members, members of the crew of vessels required for the normal operation and servicing of the vessels who come to the Philippines temporarily as part of their jobs either arriving or coming to join the vessels. The next type are D visas. These are for treaty traders or D1 visa and treaty investors. There must be a substantial trade between the Philippines and the home country. Let's move on to the next type, E visas. E visas are for accredited foreign government officials, their families, and household members. The next type are F visas. These are actually student visas. International students must demonstrate sufficient means for their education in the Philippines. The next type of visas are G visas. 
G visas are for prearranged employment. These are for foreign nationals coming to the Philippines for employment purposes. The next type are H visas. H visas are for religious workers. The next type are I visas. These are for representatives of accredited international organizations and government agencies. Next type are J visas. These are for media workers. The next type are K visas. So these visas are for exchange visitors. L visas are for refugees and stateless persons. Another type are M visas. These are bridging visa. A temporary visa which allows a foreign national to stay in the Philippines after the expiration of the current visa other than temporary visitor visa. The next type is the N visa. It is a startup visa. And the last one is the O visa. These are for foreign nationals or family members who may be admitted as non-immigrants under special laws. So don't be surprised if this will be implemented very soon. If you have any other questions or comments, please post them down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Again, thank you guys for supporting my channel. And if you haven't liked this video, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. I always welcome new subscribers. Thank you guys for supporting my channel. I hope everyone is staying safe and have a great day.